Hey friends, did you know that Azure offers a comprehensive VMware environment as a service? Azure VMware Solution enables you to migrate VMs from your on-premises VMware environment to VMware-based private clouds in Azure using purpose-built, hyper-converged, dedicated nodes. Shannon Keen is here to show me how it works today on Azure Friday. Hey friends, I'm Scott and it's Azure Friday with here with Shannon Keen. How are you? I am well. How are you? I'm living the dream remotely, but it's okay. <laughs> right, right. Hopefully one day we're not living it remotely. Indeed. But speaking of living the dream remotely, people need to access their stuff in the cloud remotely. And you have some amazing demos and uh, you're going to explain to me how people can kind of accelerate that journey into the cloud sure. uh, with Azure VMware Solution. Yeah, so in my role, we spend a lot of time talking about digital transformation and how you adopt cloud. One of the fastest ways we've found is leaning on Azure VMware Solutions. So if anybody's followed the product over the course of the last couple of years, we had a, a second iteration of this reach GA last September, right around the Ignite timeframe. And this solution helps you move your infrastructure on-prem into Azure faster without having to think through that reskilling conversation, right? That usually leads to a lot of anxiety. Folks in the traditional system administration world, they feel a little apprehensive about having to embrace IaaS and a bunch of new vernacular and tooling. So this is an awesome opportunity to take that into Azure, take the tooling, the operational best practices, things that people are already doing and placing it directly into Azure on the Azure VMware solution uh, enterprise platform, so. Cool. So I understand that you have some slides and a demo to look at. I do, I do. So when you're taking a look at this, this is the software specifications and the hardware specifications. It should feel familiar if you are a VMware admin. Mm -hmm. This is what you're getting right now. If you're deploying this service, it should match up to something that you've got on-prem or maybe it's a version ahead. And the big piece here is, it's called at the bottom here. So you need three nodes per vSphere cluster. That's the minimum. Mm -hmm. There's a maximum of 16 nodes per vSphere cluster and then a maximum of 96 nodes in an Azure private cloud instance. How many people do these kinds of things usually like I, I can't think about sizing all I can see is that this is massive and you get huge amounts of compute you get a, a whole organization could run on this. Yeah, I, I would think so. We recently adjusted the maximum nodes to 96 nodes. And I think that's a direct result of bigger enterprises saying, let's embrace this solution. Let's try and migrate our VMs from on-prem and move into Azure. Um, it's a really great conversation point if you're trying to get out of the kind of the hardware business, so to speak. That's cool. All right. So this is another example of just, I don't need to manage this on-premises. I can move it into the cloud. Or if I really like my on-premises one, I can get in there too. So you're really offering the customer choice. Right, exactly. Which brings me, I think, to my next slide here. And I think it's a really interesting piece. So the shared responsibility mm. matrix, we've got one for AVS, and I'll call it AVS, right? Because Azure VMware Solutions is a little bit of a, a longer term. But if you're looking at this, you're looking at the fact that Microsoft is on the hook for hardware. I think that's a nice reality. You don't have to be bugged at two or four in the morning when something decides to fail, because it always inevitably fails when you're trying to take you know, some sleep, <laughs> trying to actually sleep throughout the night, right? So Microsoft will handle that. Microsoft will handle any of the version upgrades, the patching. You can then focus your time on your guest OS, your, your lifecycle management related to the applications that you're building within your environment. You can think about configuration management as well. Some customers haven't really embraced that aspect because they've been too busy fighting fires with their actual hardware on-prem. Dig it, dig it. This is really important. Like that is the whole point. You or your company should be focused on the uh, the business needs of your company and not the administrivia of managing these things. And this matrix makes it really clear about what your responsibilities are and what well what our responsibilities are and what VMware's are. Agreed, agreed. And I think it take it makes a little bit of sense here to talk about the actual architecture as well. So when you deploy AVS, you're getting those three nodes and you're getting an express route circuit. Um, because it's bare metal, it needs to be peered into Azure. So you first need to connect that express route into Azure. And then from there, you'll connect that express route uh, to, well, you'll actually have to have your own express route on-prem connected into Azure. And then once you've got your on-prem express route connected into Azure, plus your express route, circ or, yeah, express route circuit that's provided to you by AVS and deploying the service, you can enable global reach. And then that's what handles the east-west 
traffic routing between the two circuits. That's how you think about migrating your VM from on-prem all the way into the AVS private cloud. Take it. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I think that's it in terms of slides. And then, um, you know, let me do this. I will move over here and we can dig into what it looks like once it's deployed. All right, here we go. So the environment gets deployed and it looks a lot like every Azure service, mm -hmm. right? You've got your overview, your activity log, et cetera, et cetera. You don't really start seeing your AVS components until you come down here to manage. So let's take a look at the connectivity section. And this does take a little bit of time. Now, when I've connected to things you know, remotely in a very non-sophisticated way, there's, there's port forwarding, and I'm thinking about VPN, and I'm thinking about double natting and security. Right. There's, there's 50, 11 ways to make uh, a virtual machine available to someone over a remote desktop. And uh, I, I hope that this is going to be super easy, and I'm not going to have to do any of the horrible things that I've been accused no, of doing you, in the you past. No, shouldn't. you shouldn't. So when you're building the service, you're providing a management IP address, which is mm -hmm. different than the virtual network you're connecting it to. Mm. So I give it a, a 10.5.0.0 slash 22 network. It needs a minimum of a slash 22 CIDR block. And then it'll carve it up for you, which is awesome. You don't have to worry about subnetting your environment. I always feel like that's the area I struggle with. I'm not mm -hmm. a networking person, right? I'm an infrastructure person. And so you are, you know, you've got exposure into very fast ways of configuring the environment. So this is the vMotion network. This is the private cloud network. Uh, this instance has the internet enabled. This is where you could think about Azure Virtual, Virtual WAN, thinking about things like application gateway. I really, once you get your environment into Azure, I often joke it's like achievement unlocked, right? You get a chance to be much closer to the ARM APIs versus trying to think about that in a hybrid scenario. And it does work, it's just a little bit different, right? Once you're closer to all the APIs, it makes some of this onboarding a little easier. So uh, this is the express route circuit itself. You would you know, request the authorization keys. Um, I've done some configuration here. This one was automatically configured for me. This is the HCX environment as it stands, right? This is accessible. Once I'm inside the VNet in Azure, and I'll show you how I'm gonna get into that environment, then you can manage your HCX environment. And that's the piece that does the migrations from on-prem into Azure. This is to configure your public IP, and then this is to configure the express route global reach. Okay. Um, I like this one a lot. So we've got vCenter credentials, right? This is the IP address. This is the username, same with NSXT. You're not having to think about the password. Azure's doing it. So all you're presented with here is the opportunity to copy it to the clipboard, which makes this ridiculously secure. I think uh, prior to, customers would have to input their password and, and work with support and change on every 90 days, which is not a fun reality if you're thinking about trying to put something in the calendar to change that. So Microsoft now handles that related to cycling in the passwords or cycling mm -hmm. out the passwords. Clever. And uh, so this environment has three hosts. I can edit this environment. I can go up to four with this instance, but if you needed more, you'd have to work with support. It does require a support ticket. And then you would just save, and then within about 25 minutes, you'd have another node, which is much faster than what it would normally be if you were dealing with vSphere on-prem. Indeed. So we've exposed some of the networking pieces. So like I had mentioned, NSXT was a little bit different for every single customer. I only have one segment on here and this is what gets pre-configured when you spin up the service. But if you wanted to build out your network segments and you weren't very familiar with NSXT, we've exposed it in a way where you can go into the portal and add new segments, which is awesome. If you've got clients that need a DHCP server or a DHCP relay because everybody does things so differently, you can configure it inside of here without having to go into the NSXT manager to configure it there. Port mirroring, DNS, these are the other two pieces you can think about. So it's troubleshooting and thinking about name resolution. So that's all handled in the portal if you needed it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back here to the resource group. So I've got a jump host uh, configured within the environment. And this is how I access AVS, because if you think about it, it's VMware as a service. So it's kind of in between IaaS and PaaS. It's not one over the other. So there's pieces of it you need to have access to. And I need a jump host sitting in, behind an Azure Bastion, which the Azure Bastion host is a way to provide secure access into that VM without having to expose the RDP port or the SSH port. 
me grab the password. I, for some reason, can't remember this, which is good. It means I've created a secure password. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now I am in the environment in Azure. So wow. AWS, you know, deploys, you need a way to access it. It's just like VMware on-prem. Everything's accessible via the web portal, and they've made so things let me, better. Let me stop oh, you here and just take a moment, because I want to absorb this, because this might be hard for people to see and understand, because you have a browser, and you have another thing in a browser. Would you maybe minimize, minimize the browser, the second, the inner, the inner browser here? Because what sure. you're looking at is we're in an HTML5, you know, a JavaScript, a modern web RDP client that's included in Azure Bastion. I see that you have your start menu on the outside and then you have the other start menu. Yeah, which is crazy. And this service is loved by a lot of customers as a result. It's a great way for you to lock down your environment. And that's amazing. Um, you didn't have to install anything. There's no extensions. It's just, you just hopped into a machine securely. Correct. correct. And there's a public IP on the Azure Bastion environment, but not on the VM, which amazing. makes yeah, right. It's super awesome. And so I always recommend keeping something in the event that Express Route ever decides it doesn't want to work right. It, things do still happen once you're in the cloud, but this way you could access your environment in the event there's ever any sort of issue with an Express Route circuit coming from on prem into Azure. Slick. That's really cool. Um, so let's let's just take a look at the actual portal next, right? I think mm -hmm. uh, a lot of folks get hung up. They think it's extraordinarily different and it's it's not. Oh, I was in the right environment. Hang on. So let's grab the VMware IP address. Looks just like VMware on-prem. We'll launch the HTML5. Cancel out of that. I will grab the password. That is this on in. And now Azure will take care of this. You don't have to worry about this, but now we're in the environment. So let's go into kind of the, the home screen. Looks just like vCenter on-prem. You'll know it's different though, because you see northcentral.avs.azure.com. Okay. And then you can go into your hosts and your clusters. This is where you see the actual hosts deployed. And you know, you'll see kind of the making the model, the version of software. I see. On. So if I'm hearing you say that if I'm a vSphere person, I'm right at home, even though my VMs are now in Azure. Right. But you will see little things like this, right? Northcentral.avs.azure.com. Mm -hmm. And then you can think about integrating with Azure too. So there's ways in which to build like content libraries. So when you templatize your VMs and you spin them up, um, you want to spin them up fast. So you kind of develop a template. You can store those templates on Azure Blob Storage as well. So there's, there's interesting ways of picking apart Azure without having to drink from the funnel of Azure as you're kind of your first go around. You can kind of pace yourself, so to speak. I think this helps a lot of enterprises out who are trying to think through what a digital transformation looks like without having to worry about scaling up uh, you know, out the gate, right? They can scale up at a pace that makes more sense for their company. That's really slick. Would this even have been conceivable a few years ago? Right, yeah, and it's, it's a crazy reality. In fact, at first I was a little hesitant, but as I started to get more of an understanding on how this actually works, I was thinking to myself, man, Microsoft is finally reaching system administrators where they are versus having them take on IaaS, which, I mean, I'm sure you've seen this, right? The idea that customers get a little apprehensive taking on something that's brand new and slightly foreign. Um, this feels a lot less foreign. This starts to lessen that conversation uh, related to skilling and the apprehension and potential anxiety, right? It starts to kind of lessen all of that and gets folks comfortable with what it looks like. And you have the same tooling, right? So you've got uh, capacity use the web GUI. You can also use um, VMware's PowerShell components, which is essentially just called Power CLI. You can think about using that as well. And you can bring about certain tools into the mix without having to really refactor everything. Just makes me think about, uh, unfortunately, the second page of my multi-page resume. It's always fun when the second page of your resume becomes a checkbox in Microsoft Azure. <laughs> and it's just like, well, I just ripped that page out now. Like, I don't need to know how to rack these servers anymore. I, I have a checkbox now. 
right now you can actually sleep at night and not have to worry about something potentially failing, right? Because you can always design around things to make sure that you've got high availability, but somebody's going to be on the hook for replacing that power supply, adding additional RAM if they need to, right? And dealing with host management and maintenance. Um, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a fun reality. And I think a lot of customers are realizing the value of getting out of the data center business and actually focusing on moving all of that into Azure versus keeping it on-prem. Very cool. So where can I go and learn more about this and where can customers uh, play? A couple of different spots. So we have the VMware hands-on labs. And if you are a VMware administrator, you should be fairly familiar with the fact that uh, VMware does these click-through demos. Mm. So you can literally go to this link, click on take this lab, and there will be a click, like a guided click-through on how to set up the cloud deployment and connectivity. And then the second lab deals with the migration components. Remember, HCX is the piece that helps on that front. So that helps you kind of spin up the environment, deploy the environment, and migrate VMs. So that's one place. And then we're in the process of building a number of learn modules. Now, there's only one live, but in the very short order here, we should have two more live, and that'll kind of complete the core path for Azure VMware solution. So this one deals with the deployment side of it. So, you know, it's not, not a fairly lengthy amount of time to go through it, right? About an hour. And you'll learn how to plan for it. You'll plan for the network topology. You'll deploy the service connected to on-prem. You'll configure those NSXT components like I had walked through in the portal. You'll think about you know ways to configure and segment your network environment. And then there's a knowledge check, which helps you get that badge. And then the summary, which is an awesome spot to go to. Fantastic. Uh, the last link is just the landing page, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really great content in here. There's a bunch of great tutorials. There's a lot of great how-to guides, and this keeps getting like expanded upon. So mm -hmm. as we start thinking through more integration scenarios, as we start working with more and more customers who have unique situations that we have to think through and solution, we're building great pieces for customers to take and implement in their environment. So, you know, you've got the overview, the quick starts, the tutorials, concepts, all this on the left here really helps you tell that tale and deploy the environment within your world. So it makes it a little easier, I think. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thanks for having me. All right. I am learning all about how to accelerate my journey into the cloud with Azure VMware Solution today on Azure Friday. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Azure Friday. Now I need you to like it, comment on it, tell your friends, retweet it, watch more Azure Friday.